Okay, we're going to look at Jupiter, the largest planet. Now, Jupiter has been described, the solar system has been described as Sun and Jupiter with a few bits of debris. Jupiter is two and a half times the size of the others. It's got a sort of manic, stormy quality to it. It rotates once every eight hours, eight or nine hours or so. So it rotates very fast and uh, it's very stormy. It's almost a star or, you know, you could think of it as almost a star. Actually, that's a bit of an exaggeration. And the Great Red Spot, obviously, which you can see in the corner there, is a huge storm, much many times larger than the Earth. That's Adrastia, the second innermost moon. And the innermost moon of all is Metis, just there. I don't know much about those, I'm afraid. Next one out, or one of the closer ones, is Amalthea. Amalthea is named after the goat that suckled Jupiter, or was used as a baby, and is the largest irregular satellite. It's reddish, as you can see. Um, the next four moons of the Galileans, they orbit within the radiation belts of Jupiter, and they are, have got absolute manic stuff going on. Right, the first of these is, Gal is Io. Io, it looks like a pizza has constant volcanic eruptions because of the tug of war going on between it, the other satellites, and Jupiter, which heat its inside and cause constant volcanic eruptions, which turns the inside out every few years because of all the stuff. That's sulfur on the surface there. It's very hot, very stormy. Nobody could live there. The next one out is Europa. Now you'll notice that these are all sorts of like inner neighbourhood. Europa looks boring on the outside and is a sort of cue ball with a few scratches on it, but in fact it may have life on it because underneath that icy surface there is an ocean of water which is warmed by the tidal forces but once again on the outside there is a strong radioactive flux going on and you wouldn't be able to survive there on the surface then we get the biggest moon all of these four moons for for uh, just to say are the size of planets they are you know if they're on there and they're outside of planets that's Ganymede Ganymede is the biggest moon it has some evidence of continental drift going on it has a deep ocean of water inside it which amounts to a mantle and it's the largest of any moon in the solar system so that's Ganymede finally just outside the radiation belts is Callisto Callisto formed just before the late heavy bombardment and is the least dense of the four large moons of Jupiter so you can see that it has the crater basin of Asgard there. There's another one called Valhalla further down and it is absolutely covered in craters. Very icy, uh, very white because of all the craters and inside it's similar to Ganymede. It's got a thick mantle of ice, of water rather, uh, going most of the way to the centre in a large rocky core and again is planet sized. Then there are a lot of planet, a lot of moons beyond that. That's Himalaya which is the largest roughly the largest moon apart from um, Io, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto or rather the most massive moon it's not actually the largest uh, and it is roughly round now there are some more further out one interesting one is Leda which is only 16 kilometers across but was somehow detected from Earth in about 1974 I think so that's Leda all the moons ending in A go round in the same direction as, Ju as each other as Jup Jupiter's rotation and all the moons ending in E go the other way. That's Pasiphae, which is the large, d most distant moon from Jupiter uh, until the year 2000. The next, there's another one in another one which was discovered more fairly recently was Sinope. This is Sinope, as you can tell, it goes around the other way from the name. Now, until recently, that was the most distant moon discovered. And then more recently, a moon called Megaclite was discovered, as you, which, as you can tell, also orbits the other way around. By this point, we are actually 30 million kilometers from Jupiter. Jupiter's system is enormous, and a lot of it consists of captured asteroids because Jupiter is next to the asteroid belt. Now, just to slide in a bit and illustrate how large the Jovian system is, Altogether, it's 60 million kilometers across, so it would be easily visible from Earth if you could see the orbits, but you can't see the orbits. Finally, let's have a quick zoom in to Jupiter from this distance to illustrate how Galileo would have seen the moons. There we go. Now there's Jupiter again, a uh, very stormy, very torrid place, quite warm. There's Io in the distance the, the, nearby there, and another moon in the distance, not sure what that is, possibly Europa. That one there is 
maybe Ganymede, could be Callisto and then finally moving out a little bit further you should be able to see two more moons coming in, one on either side um, one of those will be Ganymede and Callisto and that is the kind of view that you see through a telescope from Earth and the view that Galileo saw that kicked up all the problems.